Now that we've finished defining a very simple GraphQL backend, the next goal is going to be getting something rendering, which means we're going to spend a tiny bit of time setting up our front end. We are going to be using Vite and Vue, and we're going to be using a front end GraphQL client called Urkel. I found Urkel to be a great fit. They have both official view bindings and a really solid core, and everything works great out of the box. So let's go ahead and get that one set up. If you are following along, you can go ahead and create your own template like this. Yarn create Vite, the name of your project, and then we're going to be using the view TypeScript template. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is have a look at the template. I have this app component, which has show books and create book. Both of these are completely empty components that don't do anything at all. We're going to be filling those out as we go. The first thing we're going to need to do is install Urkel. So let's go ahead and import Urkel and set this one up. We're going to be importing from Urkel slash view, and we're going to go ahead and grab the create client function. We're also going to grab the default export. This is implemented as a plugin, so we're going to say use, pass in Urkel, and the second argument is going to be create client, which takes an object of options. The only one we're interested in is going to be URL, and that's going to be on HTTP localhost 4000 slash GraphQL, which is exactly what we've been working with so far. Finally, let's go ahead and try and make a request and see what happens. We're going to do that over here inside of show books and attempt to render all of the books. We are going to need a few imports, so let's go ahead and import a few things from Urkel view. We're going to go ahead and grab the use query composable, and we're also going to grab the GQL tag to declare our queries. The first thing we're going to need to do is create our query. I like to give mine the same name as my component, so in this case it would be show books, and that's going to be equal to GQL, and we are going to eventually get type safety inside of here as well, based on our types. For now, let's just go ahead and define our query. I'm going to give mine a name of show books, and this is going to be the exact same query we made earlier. We're going to grab app and books, and inside of here we're going to have ID and title. Now that we have that, we have to go ahead and make our query. This is just going to declare it. What we need to do to make our query is go ahead and create a new variable and call use query and pass in the query, which is going to be show books. This is going to give us a number of useful properties. You can see here we have data, which is the data we fetched. We have any errors, and we're also going to have this flag fetching. If we actually take a look at the types here, you can see these are going to be refs. So they are going to be reactive. Everything is going to update reactively exactly like you would expect. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and actually render something. We're going to start off with a div and do a vf and just see if we're loading still. So we can go ahead and do show books dot fetching dot value. If this is true, it means we're loading. So let's just go ahead and say loading. There is going to be a few other cases. For example, we're going to say v else if and see if we have an error. So show books dot error dot value. If this is true, we're just going to go ahead and render the error so we can say showbooks.error.value. Finally, if neither of these is true, we know we have correctly loaded the data, so let's go ahead and render that. All we need to do is show a list of books, so we're going to use an li in here, and it's going to just be a loop over all of our books. So we're going to say book of showbooks, let's go ahead and type that correctly, dot value or dot data dot value, and this is going to contain all of our data, so it's going to be dot app dot books. Obviously we're not getting any completion here right now, which is not really ideal. The goal is going to be making this fully type safe. Just keep that one in mind as we move forward. Finally, let's go ahead and render our book. We're just going to say book.title. And with a bit of luck, this is now going to work. Let's save it off and give it a try. I'm going to go ahead and start my Vite server on Yarn Vite, which is going to launch it on localhost 3000. If we head over there now, we're actually going to get an error, I believe. Let's refresh the page and see what happens. What's happening is nothing, and the reason nothing is happening is we haven't actually used our component. Let's head over to app.view and use our showbook component by just rendering it in here. If we save this one off now and head back to our browser, we are probably going to get an error. It's saying invalid vnode was created, which is uh, not really what I was expecting. Let's quickly see if we can figure out what's going on. I'm just going to go ahead and start my Vite server again. I think we had a bit of a problem there. If I refresh the page, we are getting a different error. We can see that one's working correctly. It says failed to fetch. And the reason this is happening is because we're making a cross origin request and we haven't allowed cross origin requests. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quickly over here, just using the cause middleware. All we need to do is say app.use and pass in cause. We can now make a request from localhost 3000 to localhost 4000. If we head back here and refresh the page, we can see this is now working correctly. We're getting our, our variable here. 
If we take a look at the network tab, we can see how it's all working. We are doing our query here and passing our query to the back end, and it is going to respond with exactly what we expected. It's also including a few extra pieces of data, including the type name. And this is something that Urkel is going to use later on to make sure everything is correctly updated. Just before we move on, I'm going to show you how the other properties work as well. You can see we're currently rendering the books and that's happening inside of here. It would be nice to show how everything works with the loading status as well. And that's going to be very easy to do. We can come over here inside of server and simulate this just using async and a set timeout. What we're going to do is return a new promise inside of here. And this is not going to be resolved for a few seconds. And that's going to let us see our loading spinner. Let's just go ahead and do a set timeout inside of here. And all we're going to do is resolve our value. In this case, we're going to resolve context.app. We're not going to do this for 1000 milliseconds though, and it's going to give us a nice little uh, loading state. We don't even actually need async here. I'm just going to get rid of this one for now, and this should be working. If we head back here and refresh the page, we are getting loading, and now title is being displayed. So you can see that's working as we were expecting. It's all updating reactively. We could also get an error quite easily. Let's just go ahead and see that before we move on. So what I'm going to do inside of here is just reject this one after let's say uh, 1000 milliseconds. So let's just say reject and say this is an error. Save this one off and see what happens. If we refresh the page now, that is going to give us an error and that's working exactly as expected as well. I'm going to go ahead and revert these just so I don't have to wait around, but that is generally the idea of how GraphQL is going to work. So now we've set up our back end and we've also set up our front end. We've seen how you can use use query and GQL to declare these tags. And we've also seen a lack of type safety here. We've now duplicated our types again. If we look at the server, we have our schema up here. We have one set of types. We're then defining them again at down here inside of the context. And we're then doing them again over here inside of our show books component. You can see this is going to get out of hand very quickly. And that's why it's so important to consider how we can do correct type safety. We're going to move on to that in just a moment, but before we do, we're going to set up what's called a mutation so we can actually update the, the context, add some books and have everything rendered dynamically. Once we've finished that, the app is going to be feature complete and we're going to shift our focus onto making everything type safe.